Samsung is giving away some of its new S20 handsets in Australia. I've got a clue on how you could win one today if you live in Melbourne. But first, let's unbox the S20 Ultra for ourselves and run through some of the features no one's really talking about. Well, there it is, the Samsung S20 Ultra 5G model in all its glory. It's just a little bit bigger than my Pixel 4 XL, but it is a lot more expensive. The Ultra model starts at $19.99, and if you're spending that much, you're probably buying it for the camera. A 108 megapixel camera with a 100 times zoom is a big statement. Personally though, I'm more excited for the new single shot mode, which allows you to take 14 different photos and videos all at once. All you need to do is record a 10 second video, the phone does the rest. Boomerang style videos, ultra wide, smart crop and focus effect photos are all captured at once. The AI will even suggest what it thinks is the best shot. Now keep in mind that single shot won't take 14 clips and flicks every time. It all depends on how you move the phone. So if you really want a specific photo or video of that special moment, it's best to do so manually. Hijacking my brother's Bluetooth speaker while he's in the shower was, and frankly still is, one of my favourite pranks. There's no better way to listen to It's Raining Men. On the S20, Samsung has dreamed up music share. Basically, up to five people can control the music in a car or on a Bluetooth speaker that's connected to a single device. Now, depending on your friends, this could be a blessing or a curse. But if you're big on road trips or catching Ubers, the potential is there if you have the phone to do it. Apple's AirDrop has been one of the best reasons to own an iPhone over an Android device, in my opinion. Finally, Samsung has an answer that operates in much the same way. It's called Quick Share. Select a file, hit share, and accept. It's not going to blow anyone away, but it erases a big black mark against Samsung hardware, in my mind. The feature will also be rolled out to older devices if they can handle Android 10. Having a buttery smooth screen that refreshes 120 times per second isn't any good without touch sensors to match. Now, gamers will be happy to know that the Galaxy S20 range has 240 hertz touch sensors built in. You can't tell how much of a difference that makes unless you've got the phone in your hands, but the screen is hyper responsive. I'm not sure it will have me trading in my PlayStation controller anytime soon, but it does improve the feedback you get while using the keyboard. 8K video feels like it should be for cinema cameras only. Instead, it's built into a phone for the very first time. The Galaxy S20 range can only manage 8K at 24 frames per second, which won't be as smooth as some people may like. But it does mean video screenshots look better than ever. Each one you take is essentially a 32 megapixel photo. Now, how good that screenshot looks will depend on how much you were moving the phone at the time, but I've seen screenshots from the other side of Sydney Harbour and the entrance to Luna Park was as terrifying as always, despite being hundreds of metres away. 95% of Samsung's Australian Galaxy S20 pre-orders were for the 5G models. Yes, early adopters often gravitate to cutting-edge technology, but this is a sign of things to come. Apple doesn't currently sell a single iPhone that can handle 5G. That may be keeping iPhone prices down for now, but I don't think Apple can afford to sleep on the faster network again. 5G is being rolled out across Australia and consumers are clearly out to future-proof their phones for what's to come. Right now, Samsung is beating Apple to that punch. I love my Google Assistant. I do not love Bixby. When Samsung announced that Google Duo was its official FaceTime equivalent, I was hoping that Google's Assistant would be next. The Bixby button is gone on the S20 Ultra, but Bixby is still well and truly alive. You can call it up with a quick tap of the power button. It's not the end of the world and you can still use Google's Assistant if you want, but because it's not the default, it's slower than it is on Google's Pixel 4. OK, National Gallery of Victoria. Well, there you have it, eight features no one's really talking about when it comes to Samsung's S20 Ultra. If you want one for yourself and live here in Melbourne, here's how you can win one. If you were to look at a poster inside Samsung's store at High Point Shopping Centre, you'd be barking up the right tree. 
That's the first clue, direct from Samsung themselves. It's only live for today, so the clock is ticking.